outro cast. Richard, I'm going to say good morning. I'm I'm assuming you're on the West Coast, so it's still morning out there. I am. Yes. Where are you? New York. Uh, oh, the, okay. The other uh, comedy elitist area. So, how's your day going? Aside from having to do press and you know answer the same questions over and over and over again about they're going to know. Oh no, th- it's going great. I, I love uh, talking about comedy, and uh, I've seen a few of your episodes, and you are very oh. good at uh you know talking to people and uh, asking good questions so no i'm i love uh i love doing this stuff that's that's great to hear because i i think um with comedians you have the people who hate doing the interviews and they hate talking to anyone who's a pedestrian and then you have the comedians who are able to turn on and off and are functional human beings and you come across as a functional human being you know for a comic Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, I think, you know, back in the day, you could just be a weirdo that kind of went on stage and yeah. you know was kind of a misanthrope and just told jokes and stuff like that. But I think where comedy is going now, uh, you have to be kind of a real person uh, because, you know, people, I, I, my feeling is that people want to hear somebody that knows what they're going through and can like, and can relate and we can laugh together. And I think that takes more than just saying something you wrote. Yeah, I think I remember early into Mark Maron's WTF podcast where he was kind of complaining about how the next generation of comedian was so well adjusted and they didn't have the prerequisite dark side. I think he was starting that with Andy Samberg and oh, yeah. Sudeikis and all that and going like, you guys are normal. What's the deal with this? Now, you yeah. did come from a normal job before all this working in tech. Mm-hmm. Were you kind of like the most weird person in the normal job was that your kind of deal uh definitely was the weirdest person in the normal job and uh i i have the mark Marin badge if uh, you know if he wants uh validation for me uh yeah i had a really really messed up childhood so i'm fully qualified to do this um but i uh yeah i had a normal job first because um uh so i'm my i'm indian descent and uh my uh parents uh Indian families are very uh, adamant about you getting like some sort of uh, white collar job and sure. uh, you have to just prove yourself there first before you're allowed to do anything else. So uh, yeah, I was a computer programmer, but it just was not for me. And eventually I was like, they they were never happy with the decision to quit and do comedy, but you know, they have to deal with it. Isn't that, but before we talk about, they're going to know, isn't that kind of every, ethnicity in a way with the yeah. first generation because sometimes when you're making the forced conversation people go you know uh my latin temper and you're like doesn't every <laughs> nationality have a temper you know yeah. my pride is an irish person you go doesn't every nationality have a pride kind that's, of thing that's a hundred percent true i think that the, and the, also like they go like oh you know well hey i'm indian so i'm i'm late to all my parties you know like yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> We, I'm we're Jewish. All... I like food. And you're like, doesn't everyone like? Yeah, you know how Jewish people love to eat, right? <laughs> exactly. So, you know, just I keep saying the name of your album. They're going to know. And I love the way that it starts out where you talk mm-hmm. about Wednesday night being kind of the night. Yeah. Uh, to some extent, I don't want to give away what the bit is mm-hmm. and all that. But if you're in a different city, would you go, hey, Tuesday night, would you change it night to night? Uh, I I think yeah, if it's a weekday for sure. I mean, I respect those people that are coming out on a on a weekday to see comedy when they have work the next day. Uh, to me, those are the most fun people. You know, like I've I I've done comedy on all days of the week, and uh, right. you know, <laughs> I've seen all the different crowds. And uh, you know, Friday they're, they're always you know it, it's it's fun. Cause it's usually full, but you notice that these are the people that, uh, you know, they work the full week and they, they have an obligation to themselves to go out and do something fun on the weekend. And yeah, a, a little while ago, you know, Darren, the real human being, a friend texted me and went, Hey, we're doing birthday drinks tonight. And today's a Thursday. I went, awesome. You don't deal with the, the people who are living for the weekend. Oh, now yeah. with your lifestyle, Obviously, most of the gigs are Friday, Saturday, that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So most people's weekend is actually your work week. Do you actually take off Mondays and Tuesdays or anything like to reverse that whole lifestyle thing? 
yeah, Monday, uh, you're right. Yeah. Monday and Tuesday is usually like a date night or, you know, go out, see a show, you know, like, uh, I love going to, I love going to live music, you know? So, uh, I definitely have to do that during the week. Uh, so yeah, it, it is the opposite, but I, I love it. You know, going out on Monday is so fun. There's you are the you, no lines. You can eat wherever you want. No yeah. reservations. Oh, it's awesome. It's just, is it, was it Bourdain who said, don't get fish if you're going out on a Monday because there's <laughs> no delivery trucks? I didn't know that rule, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and, uh, definitely. I would probably wouldn't do like midnight sushi on a Monday. Like, Good point. That is a man of experience. So this, this record that you have, some comics, when they're putting out an album, that means they're retiring the material. Mm-hmm. And then others use it as a starting point because they're going to keep building on that material because it evolves. Which camp are you in in putting out this record? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. Uh, I, uh, I I see. Uh, well, OK, this album is just sort of like a snapshot of what I am doing at this point in my life. And mm-hmm. uh, since the album, like I, some of the jokes have gotten better. You know, like, because you listen to the album and then you go, oh, I could have added something there. I could have like, that could have, or, or those two jokes go together. So now it's a new thing. And, um, you know, here's the thing. Until like I'm ultra Dave Chappelle, John Mulaney famous, uh, th- I want this piece of art to just keep on getting packaged in a better and better way. So if I were to get a Netflix special, you know, I have some jokes on here that are like really important and, you know, I would... uh I would put those on the, the that special as well. It's tough to know how important a comedy special is these days. This isn't a real question. This is a conversation piece here. Because yeah. when I was a, a kid back in the Stone Age, you'd see the big comedians every two years or three years got their HBO special. The up-and-comers every one to two years got their Comedy Central special. And it became this like big line in the sand thing about specials. And yeah. now you find some comedians who are huge just don't care about specials. And mm-hmm. then others do that Louis C.K. once a year attempt kind of a thing. Where yeah. are you with this whole comedy special thing? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's all about uh, just putting out good work, you know, and m- my job is like, hey, ho- you know, I want to make people laugh in a way that's unique to me. Uh, you know, like, so I think of my job as a comedian as like, you know, I just watched that Arnold documentary and, uh, yeah. he keeps saying, be useful, be useful. And, uh, th- that's what I really want to do. I just want to be useful. Like, uh, yeah. you know, cause Hey, if you, if you want to laugh, there's a million comedians, you know, you can go put on, you know, whatever you want, but hopefully I'm doing something that makes you laugh in a specific way that you can only get from me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, I, uh, yeah, I don't really think about specials or anything anymore. Like, uh, I'm sort of just like cataloging my material. So, uh, you know, like my social media, like if I come up with a really, really great bit and I just go like, Hey, I think this bit is done, you know, like, so I'll just put the video up and then, uh, everybody who follows me on social media can just enjoy that, you know? Cause it sounds like, uh, to rudely interrupt you right there. It no, sounds like right. your tech background kind of informed a different kind of marketing and preparation than had you been a comic who started when they were 19 and all they did was stand up meaning you have a a healthy attitude towards social media but you also get it from being a tech person yeah uh you know that i think that's really interesting like people that only do stand up versus someone that's had a job first like i think uh i think we are at a point now where uh, a really good stand up is someone that lived their life first and now is talking about it. So yeah, I, I don't regret not starting at 19. Um, I am good at social media. Yeah. I, 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 so that's definitely been a benefit. I didn't realize it, but, uh, you know, I would just have a bunch of videos go viral and, uh, when you're good at something, you actually don't realize that you are good at it. (laughs) Except if you're Eddie Van Halen, then I think you know that you're pretty good at. Yeah. I, I, I wonder if he had some demons, though. He's like, man, that solo sucked. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> uh, I think he actually did, yes. Uh, <laughs> he had demons most of his life. But that's a really good point that I never thought about, that a lot of people don't realize they're good at something. They just kind of figured out how to do mm-hmm. it their way because they couldn't do it the normal way. And yeah. then at some point, people started telling them they were the second coming. 
Yeah, you know, I I think that's a really good way to approach uh, stand up because, well, I think you know what it is is like you you end up bridging your faults with your strengths. Hmm. So, uh, and I always felt like it was good to um, you, you, so I have a really bad problem with uh, like I I'm not able to pay attention very well. Uh, yeah. I, r right now, I if I'm engaged in something, we're talking, so we're having a dialogue. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm engaged, but I'm not able to watch movies or TV shows and follow a plot because it's very passive. So yeah. my weakness is that I don't really watch much stand up because it doesn't really uh, it, it doesn't register with me. So I ended up doing stand up, I think, in a kind of a unique way because I wasn't really modeling anybody. And so I think, you know, I may have just developed a unique style because, uh, I, you know, I'm not copying anyone really. That's a really good point. This is a really weird name drop, and it's not trying to be a name drop. This is just like having a conversation with somebody and realizing you just heard wisdom. And do you mm -hmm. know the comedian character actor Fred Stoller? Uh, th that name is familiar, but I don't know. He's on Seinfeld and Friends oh. and a lot of different things. If he was in Dumb and Dumber, if you Google Fred Stoller, you'll, you'll go like, oh, that guy. Okay. That guy. So yeah. I was interviewing him like five, six years ago. I was asking, so, you know, what's the last concert that you went to? And I was asking him a question about his concerts. And he basically said he didn't like going to concerts because there's nothing he wanted to do for two hours. <laughs> and at first I went, how could somebody not want to do that? And now every time I go out, I go, oh, this comedy show better be under two hours. That's yeah. Oh, my yeah. attention shot just like yours. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, no one wants to do anything for two hours. Like m music is doable because you don't have to pay that much attention and you can kind of like just feel it. Uh, so I'm okay with music, but, um, in terms of, yeah, like, like a movie, like there's no way I'm going to pay attention. Uh, I actually lo loved the movie Dune because you didn't have to pay attention. You just had to be like, Oh my God, I'm in a space desert. So then you go further into my assumption that comedians don't watch comedies. Uh, you, you know, I, I don't think that's a, a hard and fast rule. I think that's just for me because of my attention problem. Um, but uh, it, the thing is for me, uh, for me to laugh at something like I'm, I'm not going to laugh at like a regular comedy. Like I really love like very dark uh, stuff. Um, and the, the longer you do stand up, the more you start laughing at uh, just things going wrong. Uh <laughs> Like to me, the funniest thing is like a comedian just having a really bad set. That's, oh, yeah. yeah, it's it's hilarious. It's like uh, it, it's so much better than a comedian crushing. So you enjoy the conversations where you talk with other comics about who's a hack. Are you one of those comics? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm trying to be better uh, about not doing that because <laughs> the industry is very much like built on like uh, just forging positive relationships. But yeah, if yeah. I have like a very trusted uh, cohort with me. I will, you know, it's just great to be like, man, that guy sucks. Like <laughs> that guy stole that joke from that guy for sure. It's kind of funny which professions have that, and which don't. Like mm -hmm. I can't imagine a bunch of, for example, dentists getting together and go like, oh, you see the fillings. They're not talking shop at all. I can't imagine <laughs> dentists at all want to talk shop, but comedians immediately want to talk about what's funny and what's not funny and who's not funny. But that, back to you here, um, point of curiosity for being a tech guy, your website does not have tour dates. Oh yeah, I need to fix that. Um, so <laughs> basically, what's well, happening? Well, sometimes again to rudely interrupt you. Sometimes people are going, "Well, that's because all my dates are on bands in town," and other people go, "Well, that's because I'm mostly doing drop-ins and I don't like to publicize yeah. that." Is that what that is for you? Yeah, you know. So I think uh, entertainment is changing a lot now. So. Uh, here's the thing like i live in um so i live in los angeles and in los angeles there's uh we're talking there's so many comedians here you can you know throw a stone and hit one yeah and um so shows in los angeles are like we we do spots we do 10 minute spots uh on shows with like six other comics so for me to like list all of my spots around town i mean i i don't i don't know that it's like it's cool, but I don't know that someone's really going to drive an hour to be like, Oh my God, I'm going to watch Richard for 10 minutes. Like that's wonderful, but I don't really care to advertise that stuff. So I only put the really big shows up. Um, so I'm headlining the punchline in September 
So that'll be like a really big thing. Um, but uh, also the way entertainment is now, like you don't really have to travel that much. Um, so like this album is going to be distributed all over the place. Uh, yeah. You know, it'll go to Sirius XM and uh, you know, I'm the, the digital aspect is what's uh, is where all the distribution is like, I can physically go to a town and perform for a hundred people on a Saturday night, or my album on Sirius can just get listened to by, you know, a, a, you know, 10,000 people, you know, uh, with, while I sit here and talk to you, you know, so. That makes a lot of sense when it comes to how you're handling your career as a person who gets career options and technology and all that. So you're not, the vibes I get from you is you're not one of those comedians who's really just using it as a springboard to be an actor or a screenwriter. You're a comic to be a comic. Oh yeah. 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 I just love stand up. I mean, I think it's the thing I, I am good at acting. Um, but, uh, acting, you know, you need, uh, you, you need like uh, other people behind you to do that. Stand up is this thing that I can do, uh, on my own. Uh, I'm in full control. Uh, it, it doesn't feel like people are hitting me with a bunch of input. Uh, it's, it's, I love the, it's very pure and that's, you know, that's my favorite part. Right. You like doing the art itself, not the business behind the art. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love just, you know, I'll pace around in my apartment and just, you know, just be telling a joke and then, you know, I'll just say it like over and over in different ways and stuff like that. And, you know, I, when I think about that, I go like, I, I think most people are maybe not doing that, you know, like that's so if, if I, if I enjoy just pacing around my apartment and trying to talk to myself and make something funny, then, you know, that's what I should be doing. You know, I think a lot of people are, a lot of people do treat stand up as like, Hey, here's my character. You could place this in a movie if you wanted to, <laughs> you know, but that's not me. Exactly. Well, the, the, the last question before I let you go, music has come up a few times right here. You yes. mentioned being a music person. I can see a guitar related piece of artwork behind yes. you. Oh, yeah. What's the last concert that you went to for fun? Not because it was an obligation or you promised somebody you'd go to their gig if they went to yours. That oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was up in uh, San Francisco. This is a major throwback, but so I, uh, and, and okay, it's, the headliner was Alkaline Trio. They're, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, the, you know, uh, I've awesome seen them. Rock. Oh, you've seen them. Okay, great. Yeah, they were. Yeah, in in high school, uh, they were. You know, they were very like seminal for me. Like I learned how to play their songs and stuff like that. And so this was like a great throwback to go see them. And then uh, their opener actually was this hardcore band called uh, Drug Church. And, oh yeah, uh, they're great. I saw them open for the Chats. Very. Oh, good band. awesome. Okay, great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I went to go see Alkaline Trio, but I was wowed by Drug Church because um, his commanding presence, it was so powerful. Like, uh, and he held the microphone in a weird way. Like for a hardcore band, he was holding the mic like like this, like straight up and down, like he was like a BBC announcer yeah. or something. And uh, like his mannerisms were so interesting. And uh, but he's he's screaming. And yeah. Uh, yeah, watching him, man, it really just uh, it, it it inspired me for my stand up to be like, I just want to he, he was so commanding. That uh, that level of fame of Alkaline Trio, mm -hmm. to me, it's an intriguing thing with the bands like Alkaline Trio face to face. All these bands that kind of had that major label moment where they're mm -hmm. pushing the radio singles, then it didn't happen. They yeah. went away a couple of years and then they came back to bigger crowds than they ever played for without necessarily having to do hits or yeah. pander to the industry and it became this this kind of gig where they're they go we'll do 40 gigs a year we'll make more money than we ever did mm -hmm. and it became everybody's like weekend warrior kind of band because yeah. all the punks had to grow up and get jobs <laughs> yeah it was definitely funny to see uh i i saw a mom and daughter combo at the alkaline trio show and they were all covered in alkaline trio tattoos uh but yeah we are seeing you know it, it is funny when when you let your art sit for 20 years like alkaline trio did like uh yeah people find it and they just start becoming fans uh like look at all these bands that are coming back like the deftones are back now you know yeah, yeah. did you see that coachella how many people they're playing to at coachella and you go oh my what's God. the last time they had a hit song <laughs> and they're yeah. bigger than ever 
Yeah, exactly. Like that stuff doesn't go away. So, uh, you know, that's kind of the plan with the, all the stuff I'm doing, like with, with this album, like hopefully it just sits there and Hey, people can discover it this week or people can discover it in 20 years. I don't care. <laughs> And then hopefully, like all these bands, you have the 20th anniversary edition with the four tracks that were cut out. And then oh, the six yeah. color variants and uh, the special liner notes by whoever the David Wilde of that time is. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Because uh, one thing that was funny was uh, uh, so the, the two nights previous to recording this album, I bombed really bad at a show. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I was like, okay, well, I just give up. Like I have to record my album and I'm bad at comedy. And uh, so I went to go uh, to night of the album. I get on stage. There's a guy sitting in the front row. He was sitting front row when I bombed two nights ago. And I just looked him in the eye and we just laughed at each other. And then I just did the show and it went great. So, but like, it, there was like a knowing moment. He was like, I, I saw what happened. So what we've just learned is Richard is our favorite punk rock comedian that we don't know outright as <laughs> a punk rock comedian. Oh, a big punk rocker. I mean, yeah, I've uh, been going to hardcore shows for a long time. I got my own guitar right here. Uh, so, yeah. The, the <laughs> secret guitarist comedian club, there's you and Adam Ferrara. Uh, yes. So now we know there's the secret community. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think we're all, uh, I think, you know, it just, it just becomes like, art you know we just want to like i think people who like like performing we we just like creating you know like i do you know we like painting we like playing music we like you know any type of art well richard fantastic to learn all these different sides of you glad to know there's more touring glad to know this is not the last album etc you know keep up the great work and looking forward to what's to come from you professionally yeah, thank you so much, Darren. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I think uh, this is, album will be a good springboard to more stuff. Outro.